<laughs> and finally, uh, this is not a limerick, but I wrote this quite a long time ago, straight after the Irish um, Everest expedition. So uh, that was back in... 1993. 93, yeah. So... Um, Probably most people don't realise this, but there was actually another expedition going on at the same time on the south side of Everest, a paying expedition, and there was a guy called Pat Falvey on that expedition, and there was a great fear that Pat was going to be the first Irishman to get to the summit of Everest before before the Irish expedition. So I wrote this wee poem, and I, I didn't recite it to Dawson or anybody in the team for many, many years. <laughs> <laughs> So it's based on a Tennyson poem called Helen's Tower. So, Everest Mountain, here I stand, dominant over all sea and land. Yet atop me stands a little man with an ice axe in his hand. He thinks he is the first here today, but he's not, I have to say. For there scratched in the snow, it doth say, first Irish ascent. Pat Falve. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on to more serious stuff. Um, way to go. Um, we're supporting Marie Curie uh, tonight, and that's um, a charity close to my heart because my friend Elaine McBride spent her last month um, in the hospice uh, before she, after her 15 year battle with cancer. Uh, John McBride can't be here today. Um, he organised uh, the bucket and stuff from Marie Curie. He's on holiday currently and his holiday was booked um, before we had organised this. So uh, he was very sad not to be able to make it, but he's passed on his good wishes and hopes there's lots of money in the bucket. Um, so this poem is called Way to Go and it's maybe a better way to go um, if you get the choice. You'll see what I mean. Uh, and it's actually based on something that I witnessed uh, many years ago, 1990 in fact. So way to go. <clears throat> Pat Pong Street in the humidity of day. The sticky sun's up, but the sky is grey. Traffic snarls, horns, belching trucks, buses jockey with scooters, faces in tuk-tuks. The street cafe's parcel provides little shelter from Bangkok's wild helter-skelter. And the old man stares out over his chai. No worse or better day on which to die. I notice him sitting in my corner view, beyond my paper as I read what's new. An old face, no hair, wrinkles, a goatee beard. Serene as a Buddha, but something's weird. Nobody else at his table, but not alone. A half century's memories make it his own. His place to relax, chat with friends over chai. No worse or better place to choose to die. But the friends are gone now, victims of life. Some enjoyed it fully, others sank in strife. Some went young, accidents, illness, war. Others like him would see their setting star. Life had been good mostly, sometimes bad, that mixture of feelings, happy and sad. The whole story there over a good glass of chai, no worse or better life with which to die. He hadn't moved an inch, not even a blink, staring at nothing and everything over his drink. Not a muscle twitch, itch or passing expression. No emotion of joy, sorrow or depression. So I went to the gents and I passed with care. His eyes never followed. They were not there. They just looked past me, past the cold chai. No worse or better way to choose to die. I told the waitress and she looked scared. For a low guaranteed death cannot be shared. Seat scraped. Tables moved, the area cleared, clusters of people, conversations revered. And as I walked away into the sticky day, the old man still sat, his flush now grey. I thought, 
as he looked to eternity over his chai. Would that I could choose such a way to die. Very good. <laughs>